Good morning, dear hearts. We are on lesson 193 today, and please subscribe. All things are lessons God would have me learn. Um, besides being the title of today's lesson, it's also a phrase that I've heard many course students say whenever they're in a situation that seems to be daunting and not explainable in any other way. So well, it's stepping back and realizing that there is something here. I don't know what it is, but I will allow myself to learn whatever this lesson is so that I may be happy. Today's lesson begins, God does not know of learning, yet his will, big W, will, extends to what he does not understand in that he wills the happiness of his son inherited of him be undisturbed. We've inherited God's happiness and God's will for us is that our happiness be as his is undisturbed, eternal and forever gaining scope, eternally expanding in the joy of full creation and eternally open and holy, limitless in him because this is what God's joy and God's happiness is, always expanding in creation and full and eternally open so that it may continue to grow. That is his will. That is God's will for us. And thus, his will provides the means to guarantee that it is done. God's will will be done. We've said this many times. Then it says, God sees no contradictions. God does not see anything that is not of love, anything that is different or opposite to him. That does not exist. God doesn't see it. God does not know of it because it is a false thought. It isn't true. And so it takes up no space at all within the holy mind of God. And we are to be like that and have nothing that is opposite to love take up any space within our holy mind. Um, then the lesson our lesson goes on. It is he who answers what his son would contradict and keep his sinlessness forever safe. God always has given us the answer to any problem. As soon as there was a problem, the answer has been given to us. And the answer, of course, is the Holy Spirit. Paragraph three says, each lesson, each lesson has a central thought, the same in all of them. The form alone is changed with different circumstances and events, with different characters and different themes, apparent but not real. They are the same in fundamental content. And it is this that we can say now, forgive this, forgive and I will see this differently. Forgive this, I will see it differently. The only problem is our belief in separation. The answer is learning that in truth, I can forgive this and I will realize that there is no separation. I'm forgiving myself for having the thought of separation. Um, it goes on to say, no one can hide forever from a truth so very obvious that it appears in countless forms and yet is recognized as easily in all of them. If one but wants to see the simple lesson there, forgive and you will see it differently. So even though we believe we have many, many problems, we know that they are truly all the same. They all stem from the thought of separation. When I can see that, then it is going to be much easier for my problems to be solved. Remember back lessons uh, 70s, in the 70s, that uh, let me recognize my problem so it can be solved and let me recognize my problem has been solved. And my problem is solved as soon as I realize I am not apart from God, but I am indeed a part of God. This is what our Father would have us learn. And all things, they seem to be very different. And all of these lessons are really only one, to learn the law of love that our Father wants us to know. Um, so these are the words the Holy Spirit speaks in all your tribulations, all your pain, suffering, regardless of its form. Forgive and you will see this differently. These are the words with te temptation ends and guilt is abandoned and is revered no more. We won't hold guilt and think that it is something glorious and something to hold on to. 
Shall we not, paragraph six, shall we not learn to say these words when we are tempted to believe that pain is real and death becomes our choice instead of life? Shall we not learn to say these words when we have understood their power to release all minds from bondage? Remember yesterday, we're not going to take any more prisoners, including ourselves. These are words which give you power over all events that seem to have been given power over you. You see them rightly when you hold these words in full awareness and do not forget these words apply to everything you see or any brother who looks that looks upon amiss. Forgive, forgiveness. The forgiveness is our function here. Forgiveness is how we will rise above this world as we see it and we will easily and, and painlessly come home. And um, it says, does pain seem real in perception? If it does, be sure the lesson is not learned and there remains an unforgiveness hiding in the mind that sees the pain through eyes the mind directs. So if I'm thinking back when anything past incident that has happened and there's still that tug of pain and sorrow and anger within me, I have not yet forgiven it. That is my perception, I get to turn that over so that I can forgive and I can be free. And God would not have us suffer thus. Would you fail to learn the simple lessons heaven teachers, heaven's teacher sets before you that all pain may disappear and God may be remembered by his son. All lessons are, th all things are lessons God would have me learn and all lessons are one lesson and all lessons can be learned and I can come home. I can learn the law of love. I can forgive and see everything differently. Forgive, true forgiveness, deep forgiveness, radical forgiveness. Let everything go. Lesson 189, hold one to nothing. Um, so uh, all things are lessons God would have you learn. He would not leave an unforgiving thought without correction, nor one thorn or nail to hurt his holy son in any way. He would ensure his holy rest remains untroubled and serene without a care in an eternal home which cares for him. Um, and then we have, for God has will that laughter should replace each one, each sorrow, each moment that is less than loving in our minds. And his son will be free again and laughter will replace each one and for his son. For us to truly be free again, we must have laughter in our life. We must have joy. Joy sets us free. Um, and now it says, we will attempt today to overcome a thousand seeming obstacles to peace in just one day. And there's a wonderful section in the text that is the obstacles to peace. And let mercy come to you more quickly. Do not try to hold it off another day. For the mercy come to us is our forgiveness as we give it and, of course, as we receive it. Um, or don't let it delay another day or minute or an instant. Time was made for this. The right use of time is to use it for forgiveness. And morning and night, devote what time you can to serve its proper aim. And do not let the time be less than meets your deepest need. So we stay in our practicing for as long as we need. And then it says, give all you can and give a little more. Give a little more because we want this to be complete. We have been gone too long from home and we would linger here no more. And as we practice, let us think about all the things we saved to settle by ourselves and keep them apart from healing. And let us give them, let us give them over to him who knows the way to look upon them so they will disappear. Truth is his message, God's message, Holy Spirit's message. Truth is his teaching. His are the lessons God would have us learn. We would learn truth. We would learn love. We would l learn true forgiveness that we can indeed be free. And the practicing today, we hadn't really been given too many instructions recently, but it says every hour. And then we're going to continue this for the lessons to come. Okay. And then as we practice this forgiveness, we want to release 
in one hour everything that has happened. So as we go into the next hour of our day, it is pristine and it is forgiven. And we're not taking anything of the past with us. So the slate is clean for us. And uh, this is the lesson God would have you learn. This is a way to look on everything that lets it be to you another step to him and to the salvation of the world. It depends on me. Remember that. And to all that speaks of terror answers thus, I will forgive and this will disappear. So anything, anything that comes to us, if we forgive it, it truly will disappear. We let it go. Hold on to nothing and as you hold the key that opens heaven's gate and brings the love of God the Father down to earth at last to raise you to raise us up to heaven and God will take this final step himself as we know do not deny the little steps he asks that you take to him so do not deny the using of forgiveness uh, that is simply our, our function don't deny that we do have this function, we can complete this function, and we will all benefit from our function. And uh, the lesson that I just want to mention from our first 50, I didn't forget, was lesson 45, that God is the mind in which I think. Because when I am thinking with God's mind, I'm not taking on any grievances. I have already forgiven because God's mind is pure and clear and has never taken on a judgment, has no grievances, and is filled with joy and light and love. And God is the mind with which I choose to think today. And that's all. So I hope this helped. Please like, please share, please subscribe, please comment. <sighs> please be here tomorrow. Let's see, what is it? Ooh, another good one. <laughs> so like, share, subscribe, comment, pray. Pray for forgiveness for all of us to let each hour be clear as we go into the next. Namaste.